Okay guys, this is the uh, final lesson for Module 3. We're looking at Lesson 3.3, Comparing and Ordering Rational Numbers. Our essential question, or what I want you guys to know by the end of this video, is how do you compare and order rational numbers? Okay, so one key term that you need to be familiar with in this particular section, and pretty much for your entire mathematical careers, is the term equivalent. Okay? Fractions and decimals that represent the same value are considered equivalent. Okay, and I have this number line here that we're actually going to go through and show some comparisons of, of equivalent uh, decimals and fractions. So the first thing that I noticed about this number line is that it's divided into ten parts. So I got uh, starts at zero, ends at one, and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we need to fill in the blanks with the missing values. So I can look at these top decimals and see that it goes uh, 0 0.2 or 2 tenths, 0 0.3 or 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 9 tenths, and then finally 1. So just using logic, I know that what comes before two tenths is going to be, well, I would think it's going to be one tenth. So I would put zero, one right there. And then I have, so I got zero, one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths. This would logically be five tenths. 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths, 9 tenths, and then 1. So that covers all my decimals. Now that was pretty easy because it's, it's laid out in, in that kind of format. The fractions down here are a little more difficult. The first one's divided into tenths, so that would mean that this is 2 tenths. And here we have 3 tenths. This one is four tenths. This is going to be five tenths. This one is six tenths. Not sure what that one is. Well, I guess it's going to be seven tenths since I've already labeled the two tenths. All right, this is eight tenths. Nine tenths and then ten tenths would be one. So we just got to fill in the blanks here with the with the appropriate uh, fraction. If you notice that um, on some of these fractions where I wrote it down, like here I wrote down three tenths. Well, that's in simplest form, so we didn't have to simplify. Here I had four tenths and it was simplified into two fifths. And how that was done is they divided both the top and the bottom by two. Four divided by two is two, and then ten divided by two is five. Here I had 5 tenths, same thing. We find um, a greatest common factor between 5 and 10 to simplify. And we found out that it's 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, and then 10 divided by 5 is 2. Same thing here. We're trying to find the greatest common factor between 6 and 10 in order to simplify it. The greatest common factor is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Right. Here we have 7 tenths. Can we come up with a number that we can divide both of these by? A greatest common factor. Well, the only factors of 7, because it's prime, are 1 and 7. The only one they have in common with 10 is going to be 1. So 7 tenths is, in fact, the simplest form for that particular fraction. Here I had 8 tenths, but it was simplified to 4 fifths. We found the greatest common factor of 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, 10 divided by 2 is 5, 9 tenths is in simplest form. So now i got to swing back over here to the 2 tenths, which I um, neglected for a second just to kind of uh, give us a second to think about it and, and, then, and then find the simplest uh, form of this particular fraction. So our greatest common factor between 2 and 10, well, there's only two factors of 2, and that's 1 and 2, So and 2 will go into 10, so we divide this top by 2, and we get 1, and then we divide the bottom by 2, and we get 5. Okay, so what we've learned here is that 1 tenth, its equivalent fraction is 0 0.1, or 1 tenth. 
the fraction one-fifth, its equivalent decimal is 0 0.2, or 2 tenths. 3 tenths, its equivalent decimal is 3 tenths. 2 fifths, equivalent decimal is 4 tenths. 1 half, well, that's still basically a half. All right, 0 0.5 is 5 tenths. Uh, 6 tenths simplified to 3 fifths, and that equivalent is 6 tenths. 7 tenths doesn't simplify, so its equivalent is 7 tenths. And then 4 fifths, it's uh, equivalent to 8 tenths. 9 tenths and 9 tenths are equivalent. So that is essentially equivalent fractions and decimals. Okay, so we need to know this in order to move on to the next section. So the next section is an example in the book. I even wrote it up here, page 60. So if you want to turn to your um, lesson 3-3 on page 60, and you can follow along with this example. So it says that you can order fractions and decimals by rewriting the fractions as equivalent decimals. Okay, so I'm going to just highlight that because that's, that's what I'm focusing on here right now. All right, all the way to there and all the way. Wait, let's go back. I didn't want to go that far. All right, but you get the idea. Let me erase that little bit right there. Right to the or. All right, that's where I want to be. So, there we go. So you can order fractions and decimals by rewriting the fractions as equivalent decimals. Okay, so here's our first one. We got order 2 tenths, 3 fourths, 8 tenths, 1 half, 1 fourth, and 4 tenths from least to greatest. So we pick all the fractions and we turn them into decimals. So here I'm going to highlight the fractions. I got three fourths, I got one half, I got one fourth. Okay, and I want to rewrite those as decimals. So I got here one fourth, one half, three fourths. How did I get from one fourth to twenty five hundredths? Well, there's a couple ways you can do that. If you're familiar enough with money, you know that one-fourth of a dollar is 25 cents, so that may just come natural. If you don't know that, then the, the simplest way, or one of the best ways to find out a decimal equivalent is to divide, because once again, that bar right there means to divide. So you can divide one by four. So over here, I'm gonna divide one by four, and see what happens. All right, so four won't go into one, not evenly anyway, so I have to add a decimal and divide that way. So four won't go into one, but will four go into 10? Well, yes, it'll go in there two times. Two times four is eight. And it's a little slow tonight. Eight from 10 is two. I can add a zero bring it down, and that gives me 20. 4 will go into 20 five times. 5 times 4 is 20. I subtract, and I get nothing as a remainder. So it goes in evenly at 0 0.25. So that is where we get this. And you do the same thing with the others. Okay, and once again, you may be able to just recognize these uh, if I can think about dollars, I'm always going to do that. Half of a dollar is 50 cents. Three quarters of a dollar, we talked about that in class the other day, is the same as um, 75 one hundredths or 75 cents. Okay, now that we have that information, we can put them on the number line and then we can write our decimals in order. Okay, so we had 0 0.2, we plotted it right there. Then we had um, 0 0.25, we could plot that there. We had uh, 0 0.4 here. So we plot that right there. We had 0 0.5 here, so it gets plotted. Then I had, we already plotted that one. Then I have 0 0.75, which goes here between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8. And then finally we have 0 0.8. So to put them in order, you would just list them like this. And this is, this is the comparison. This is how you're comparing them. Right there. Right there. Right there and then finally right here, okay? So 0 0.2 is less than 0 0.25, or 2 tenths is less than 25 hundredths. 25 hundredths is less than 4 tenths. 4 tenths is less than 5 tenths. 5 tenths is less than 75 hundredths, and then 75 hundredths is less than 8 tenths.
Okay, so the numbers in order from least to greatest, then you go back to your original numbers and just pop them in order, is 0 0.2, 1 quarter, 0 0.4, 1 half, 3 quarters, and then 0 0.8. Okay, that's the first example. That is changing uh, fractions into decimals. So the next example we're going to look at is actually the opposite. And I got the same statement up here. Let me just highlight this now. You can order fractions and decimals. I'm going to stop right there by rewriting the decimals as equivalent fractions. Okay, so now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to take the decimals and turn them into fractions. Okay, so here we have, we're going to order 1 12th, 2 thirds, and 35 hundredths from least to greatest. So the first step is to write the decimal as an equivalent fraction. So we learned this in class to write 35 hundredths as a fraction you're going to look at this last place in your decimal and, and know what, or try to remember anyway, what the last or what the place value that 5 holds. So that place value is in the hundredths place. So that automatically tells you that this number is going to go over 100, 35 over 100. I know I can divide my greatest common factor here between 35 and 100 is going to be 5. So I can divide that in order to simplify. 35 divided by 5 is 7. 100 divided by 5 is 20. Okay. Another thing you can do is to, um, well, another thing you have to do rather, not what you can do. We need to make all the fractions with the same denominator. So you have all the same cuts in your pie, all the same pieces. So what you would do now that I have 7 twentieths, I have 1 twelfth and 2 thirds is that I have a common denominator okay and in this case it's it's the least common multiple okay we're looking for least common multiples so I found out that the least common multiple between these three numbers is 60 okay so then I just turn all my denominators and all my numerators into equivalent fractions by multiplying by the same number to get the denominator to 60 so in this example 12 times 5 is 60 so that means I have to multiply the 1 in the numerator by 5, and I get 5. So here, in order to get the 3 to 60, I have to multiply it by 20. So I have to multiply the top by 20 in order to get an equivalent fraction. So 2 times 20 is 40. And now we have to get this 20 to 60, so I multiply 20 times 3, and I get 60. So I have to multiply 7 times 3, and I get 21. So now I have all these equivalent fractions. I kind of wrote over it there, I'm sorry. All these equivalent fractions, now I can put them in order. So the one with the smallest numerator is the smallest one. So, and that's what it's saying here, order the fractions with common denominators by comparing the numerators. I'm looking at the top number to see which one's the smallest. 5 is smaller, 21 is the next one, and then 40 is the biggest. Okay, so the fractions in order from least to greatest are 5 sixtieths, then I have 21 sixtieth, and then I have 40 sixtieths. So then I go back to my original numbers and I find out which one's which. So 1 twelfth was this one, was 5 sixtieths, that's my smallest one. Um, let's see, my 7 twentieths is 21 sixtieths, so that was the middle one, so that was uh, 35 hundredths. And then two thirds wound up being the 40 sixtieths, which is the largest one. And that's it. We're going to talk about this more in class, so be prepared. And I will see you guys tomorrow.